Um, in Norristown, Pennsylvania, um, I'm going to, I'll read this in a, so there is a law that if the cops come to your house over three times, um, that the state encourages or finds, uh, the landlord to get rid of you. Oh God. Now, uh, at first, maybe some of you are thinking, oh, like if you have like loud parties three times, where do you think, uh, how do you think this creates a problem? Domestic abuse? Yes. Yeah. So uh, last year, uh, there was a woman named uh, Lakeisha Briggs. Her boyfriend physically assaulted her and the police arrested him. Um, and then the police officer told Mrs. Briggs, you were on three strikes. We're going to have your landlord evict you. So the police threatened Mrs. Briggs with eviction because she had received their assistance for domestic violence. Um, and then they talk about Norristown's law that I just told you about. Um, here's what's even more fucked up about that. What's even more fucked up is not only are you evicting a woman for being abused, but what happens in between when you know that law? Well, what happened to Mrs. Briggs? Um, after her first strike, Mrs. Briggs was terrified of calling the police. Uh, she did not want to do anything to risk losing her home. So even when her now ex-boyfriend attacked her with a brick, she didn't call. And later, when he stabbed her in the neck, she was still too afraid to reach out. Um, so what ended up happening was neighbors called. Um, so she was not. So not only are you punishing women who are being uh, physically abused, but you are also uh, scaring the shit out of them. Yeah. And you're enabling more abuse because they don't want to lose their home. That's crazy. Send yeah. me the link. To I it. did. Thank you. So that was from the ACLU. Um, so they're suing. Which is awesome. But uh, Norristown is not the only place um, that this is happening. There are a bunch of laws like that. And again, it's so classic where people, when, when Congress or whoever pitches it, they're probably pitching it as, you know, like, well, you know, you don't want a bunch of loud neighbors because no one ever thinks about women. Yeah, there are certain communities where there's like policies that you have to arrest both people when there's a domestic violence dispute. Right, 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 right. I remember that. But also like... Um, also the, if a dumb law gets passed like that, and let's say we're assuming the best out of that state government and they were doing it because of noisy parties. I keep using noisy parties because nothing makes me more mad, um, than noisy parties, but it was probably like drug busts and stuff or like whatever. That. Yeah. At what point when you're a cop and a singular, a singular person, when you get there and you just go, sorry, lady strike three like at what point do the police officers start speaking up because i gotta tell you like if you're not speaking up you're just as fucking bad i mean you are enabling abuse you are a police officer whose job is to stop crime and you are enabling crime uh against a woman like the fact that while he was there after she got beaten up while they are arresting the dude who beat her up he's like also by the way how do you fucking say that well this is why it's important to have an independent like inspector general's office where it's important to have a place where police officers can file those kinds of grievances because what happens with stuff with uh, police forces where there's not an IG office is you find a lot of police officers, like a lot of them, yeah. who oppose uh, stop and frisk, who oppose drug busts, who think pot should be legalized, who don't want to waste their times on these like small time dealers, who do want to do stuff like help with rape cases and stuff like that. But what are they going to do? Speak out to their supervising officer and maybe get fired or demoted? Well, and then you also have a lot of people who, a lot of men who, uh, who think that just like rape, a lot of times uh, domestic violence is the, the the woman's fault. Like, why does she stay with him? But I, I mean, bet you there are a lot of cops too who think, "Wow, this is a really fucked up policy." But maybe they don't feel like they are empowered to like go anywhere and file a complaint. Right. Or think like, I just want to get through the day. I just want to get a paycheck and take care of my family and I don't want to stir the pot. You know, yeah. not excusing it. It's a fucked up policy. And if you enforce it, you should feel really bad about yourself. But I do also recognize that maybe there's not like mechanisms in place for people to like, you know, file those grievances. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it, it's so crazy that a lot of I mean, it's not crazy. It makes perfect sense. But a lot of um, these kind of rape culture defenders 
or people who would turn a blind eye to domestic view to domestic abuse. These are literally people who have been through a bad divorce and suddenly they're just like bitches. But it honestly like like <laughs> I've heard guys where you're describing domestic abuse and it's like, did she cheat on him? And it's like, uh, does that, it fucking matter? That doesn't matter. <laughs> Holy shit, buddy. Yeah. Um, well, this, I think this is why it's so important to have official uh, policies in place that preserve our, like protect human rights and ensure equality. Yeah. So you can't have subjective uh, remarks like that where people are saying you know well if the bitch cheats anything is fair game you whoa, know it's like whoa yeah. I, I'm really sorry about your personal experiences but that doesn't give you the right to violate the human rights of this woman also by the way uh, if my husband was constantly threatening to beat the shit out of me I would probably want to fuck someone else too <laughs>